Hey, Brass Facts here. I've had one too many energy drinks. Let's do a video. As many of you know, I have a night vision laser aiming module addiction. I'm constantly searching for the one, the one laser to rule them all, the one I can just recommend to everyone without question. As cool as drippy as laser aiming modules are, lambs, night vision can really quickly ruin a firearm. On one hand, you have a nice, well-balanced ergonomic rifle, and then it instantly becomes a clusterfuck when you shove a large, heavy box on the front of the thing. And that's not even considering the monetary damage or emotional flagellation you receive when you realize your $1,300 A3 gets curb stomped in performance by a Chinese airsoft laser at easily one third the cost. Because Chinese companies just don't need to play by the rules. Where am I going with this? I don't actually know. Maybe I'm just venting. But today we're going to be taking a look at another contender, the Wilcox Raid XE in civilian power. Right out of the gate. 99% of you will never own one of these, me included. I'm borrowing this one for a very short amount of time. These things just don't exist right now. As far as I know, they are just backordered in perpetuity for civilians because, you know, we get sloppy seconds. You can buy one on tax swap for 5200 but uh, just don't. So, for the sake of this mini review, I'm just going to pretend they do exist and you can actually buy them, when in reality, this video is more of a curiosity thing on what exactly makes up the high-end current laser market instead of being something you can actually go out and buy. In terms of acceptable illuminator performance level, V-Cell Tech has made laser-based illuminators virtually obsolete for rifle employment in the civilian market. A AT APLC, Steiner A3, Hallsun LS321 all pale in comparison to a V-Cell illuminator, which offers near full power performance levels while still playing by the bullshit rules set by the FDA. The Steiner D2 is the unique problem child in that it uses LED tech, but the end result is still functionally the same as a V-cell based illuminator in terms of output downrange. Unfortunately, laser aiming marketing purchasing is dominated by the LE and military sales with frankly stupid budgets and the need to convince the buyer that these new units have value added over legacy full power systems. So that means while the most commercially viable civilian laser would be a Steiner I2 with a V-cell emitter for the illuminator coming in at a thousand bucks, we'll probably never actually see something like that for quite some time because, well, it's not the focus of current laser development. Instead, we get increasingly more feature-packed MFELs coming in at eye-watering prices. Which, for those that are about to ADD off of this video onto the next one, no, that's not necessarily a bad thing. These are professional units for professionals who are not paying for these things out of pocket. Real quick, lambs are cool, but do you know what's cooler? Actually being able to see the laser. Sponsor time. Nightline is one such place where you can buy said night vision. Nightline aims to be competitive while still providing non-mystery meat night vision tubes at competitive pricing. With 15% discount for Brass Facts viewers, just mentioned Brass Facts sent you, or Ask Facts. <laughs> during the purchasing process, and you will get prices that are competitive with other top tier night vision distributors. Because Nightline typically handles large government bulk orders, it's always ready to roll and get you a night vision unit without the typical wait time or compromises that some distributors have. So when you buy from Nightline, head on to the website, you'll click the buy button on the unit you want, and then you'll get in contact with someone who will guide you through the process and choose the correct tube for you. Awesome, back to the video. So the Raid XE, it's functionally a modern PEC-15 with an LED Tamagotchi monitor on the back. Of course, it's V-Cell, so it has the same raw performance as say a MOL, Steiner D2, DIRV, and very similar performance to whatever gray market full power laser you found in a trash can next to an arms room. Fingering your $3,500 cat toy, you'll find that it retains the turn wheel selector from the L3 PEC-15. Sort of antiquated to be honest, and somewhat clumsy, but no doubt familiar to many and still functional. I'll take it over many other styles. The illuminator adjustment is now on the rear, Holosun style, but elevated so you can conceivably spin it with your thumb without breaking standard grip. Even if your hands are bricks because it's cold or you're wearing thick gloves, this feature is still very much useful as you can focus from the rear while observing the downrange signature. This is in contrast to legacy style emitter dials where you dial from the front on the emitter itself, meaning very often you're just going to splash all that illumination back into your night vision tubes and autogate the shit out of yourself. The Raid XE, in typical reinvent the wheel and ruin it fashion, have easily the worst tape switch on the market. It's incredibly long, tall, and of course proprietary as fuck. Kind of reminds me of a rain switch, but somehow worse. 
I'll give them a couple points for having the plug being very low and flush to the bottom of the unit. In fact, everything on this thing is flush to the unit and there's virtually no snag points. But I'm gonna go ahead and take those points away and give it a couple more minus points because the plug itself is very long and very sticks out close to the body, meaning the plug will actually take up three to four Picatinny sections right behind the unit. This means you can't mount any Picatinny-based rail attachment methods directly behind the unit for the length of the plug. The provided tape switch isn't much better because it cants off to the left, precisely where 90% of you want to put the tape switch as right-handed shooters, right where the plug is. Weirdly enough, as a lefty, for me, this actually works out quite well, but I don't like that style of tape switch, and I'd rather just use the button on the unit. Really, just a lot of misses on this tape switch overall. Just check out any of the Wilcox marketing material. No one actually has this thing equipped with a tape switch because it doesn't really make sense on Mark 18 style rifles and just straight up doesn't fit on anything smaller. If I had to guess, this was more so designed to be mounted on BFGs or be used on elevated units such as a, you know, a sniper scope or something of that nature. And I guess the Hydra mount. This space dilemma is actually further compounded because the mounting screws on the RAID XE are in the forward position, meaning you have to have the entire laser unit in contact with Picatinny rail sections. You can't overhang it. This is a bigger deal than most realize as the d bull and PEC 15s mount from the center, and it's very common practice to have the units slightly overhanging on the front. In addition to the turn dial, this unit has a set of three buttons, toggle up, toggle down, and a center press. The toggle up and down adjusts the power function of it, making it dimmer or brighter, meaning you have some granularity in the moment when you need less or more juice on target without fucking with the turn dial. This is not some gimmick. Full power laser units, especially the Illuminator, suffer immensely from overpowering or underpowering light on target, and it gives you options finally beyond just deal with it. The center button adds some variable functionality, you could look at the most redundant graph of all time provided with this unit, or you can just realize that the center button is basically, if the unit is off, press the switch between long throw and short throw on the illuminator. At least in theory, when I do the center press, the unit tells me it's in long throw or short throw, but the downrange signature looks identical. This might be something that's limited or vestigial structure from the full power variant, no idea. There are some menu options, but most of them are limited in niche and application. There's a commentary here that this could have probably been done far more elegantly, but it certainly does work. You get the tiny LCD monitor on the back to remind you on which setting you by accident wandered in on while you were trying to adjust the power. I just slid the trapdoor over it and never looked at it during the review process. So, certainly, while well, a bit clumsy, these features in combination represent certainly value added over previous generation of lamps and 100% are usable and appreciated. Little editor's insert here. Go ahead, go follow my boy Dim Desert Knights. He actually shoots roughly in the same area I do, and he was very helpful in actually figuring out some of these idiosyncrasies with the tape switch and the fact that the, the button presses don't actually do anything in terms of switching the illuminator mode because he is one of like three people in the United States that actually owns a, uh, a Wilcox Raid XE. So yeah. Go check out his shit. He takes way better pictures than I do, and he has, he's got the tasteful hop concrete behind it too. So you should, you should go check him out. Go check him out. Yeah, thanks. Oh yeah, that's 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 more or less it. You know, you're not gonna be shocked when I say, yeah, I like a three thousand five hundred dollar laser aiming mod. It's a more user friendly D2 that went on a massive diet. Yeah, and that's probably why I'll never recommend one for someone that's balling on a budget or even remotely oh, budget conscious. It's a lot of extra money for functionally ergonomics, but ergonomics do matter. Is it pricey? Oh yeah. But likely right in line with the new standard of high-end V-cell MFALs, like the mall. The OGL does sort of represent in a lot of ways the superior version of the RAID XE with far better controls and maybe, but probably not, a cheaper MSRP. But like the RAID, it's somehow even more on Obtanium because we're probably never going to see it until 2024 or 2025. It's basically vaporware for the civilian market. Performance gain compared to a gray market full power laser isn't significant, roughly the same, but it doesn't come with the suppressed dread that should you break it, you're gonna be out of the cost of the unit because you can't actually OEM repair a full power laser. And as mentioned, that granularity and power adjustment is incredibly useful. Let's get back to the opener. The RAID XE isn't for me. Probably not for you either. 
not at that price point. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It's for those willing to shell out the cash and represents one of the two premium options that you can buy as a civilian that has V-cell performance and a high quality package. Now, you can buy a DIRV, but that does have some issues with reliability and durability, or you can deal with the massive baby that you strap to the front of your rifle with a D2. Some people can claim they do some tomfoolery with LE creds and maybe get an Engel, uh, but the percentage of people that can actually do that and aren't just lying on the internet are few and far between. Between the two, the Mall is actually probably the superior night vision centric laser. It has more intuitive controls and ergonomics that allow you to switch between modes very fast. But the size and bulk of the Mall, even though most of that bulk is offset, makes the RAID XE a far better rifle laser both being significantly lighter and less bulky in aggregate. That is, the RAID XE is a better MFAL for a gun that gets used both in the nighttime and daytime, instead of just being a night-centric rifle. So, if you jettison the terrible switch, it's very nice and compact, and it kind of just sits out of the way waiting for it to be used, versus the mall which kind of dominates the rifle. Okay, I'm going to begrudgingly give this thing back. I'm going to miss it, though. Back to the OGL waiting train, I guess. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the comments uh, in the last couple days. We've had a, lot, a couple successful videos. And yeah, I read through the vast majority of comments, even though I don't respond to all of them. And aside from a couple here or there, I appreciate all of them, negative or positive. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Oh my goodness. It snowed again? Look at this, Look at this dog. Look at this, this close-up dog.